Sneeze here, cough there, then the aches, the churning stomach, and the fever. Now comes the question, do you have the flu or is it a cold? Well, today on Del Marble Live, we're going to break down the symptoms, help you determine when it's time to see the doctor, which kind of doctor you need to see if it's too late to get the vaccine, and whether you should even bother. Plus, your office is full of germs and yuck. Do you know where the creepy crud is lurking? We tell you which areas to avoid and how you can better your chances in fighting the bug. Well, one way you fight them is naturally. From fruits to spices, we're going to tell you what ingredients you want to stock up on this winter season. Well, Jimmy, I have good news. One of the ways to better overall health is by adding a kick to your foods. Coming up, we'll show you just how hot is the right hot when it comes to helping your body. One veggie that's full of flavor and health properties is butternut squash. And today we're going to show you a recipe full of vitamins and vigor. And how about some wine to go with it? We learned some delicious wine blends, why vineyards do the pairing, and which beef recipe you may want to pair them with. And one pairing you may not want is pain and gain. But do you know when you're new to working out which pain is a good sign and which you want to avoid? We're going to break it all down for you. The Marvel Life starts right now. Good afternoon, I'm Lisa Bryant. I'm Jimmy Hopper. Welcome to Del Marble Life from Historic Studio D. And welcome back, Jimmy. Thank you. You missed the first day back. I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I heard it was a lot of fun. It though. was a lot of fun. We talked about our holiday and all the fun things we did with family. And I guess I kind of called you out because I said that you would show us some pictures today. Thing is, I forgot to tell you that you have to show us some holiday pictures today. I just happen to have some here on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> but that's going to be kind of hard for you yeah, to see. Yeah, so but you I'll did have a good holiday. It was you? a wonderful yeah. holiday. Thank you. Yours too. Good. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Spent it with family. Wasn't liking the cold we got right mm. after the holiday. Mm -hmm. That cold weather has a lot of people choosing to stay inside as much as possible. And really, who can blame them? <sighs> no kidding. The freezing temperatures don't freeze the need for blood, though. Del Marva Life's Sean Stryker joined us now from the Blood Bank of Del Marva in Salisbury with just how bad weather affects donations. Sean? <laughs> Jimmy and Lisa, the blood supply takes a big hit when the winter months roll around, so it's fitting that January is National Blood Donor Month. I'm here with Suzanne Murray with the Blood Bank of Delmarva. Thanks for joining me. Now, you were just telling me that every two seconds, someone needs blood. Yes, that's correct. Um, mm. For all reasons, and that seems to, there's no change to that. Mm. So we're going to do a little experiment throughout this interview. We're going to start a clock. I have it on my phone, just a little stopwatch. And at the end, we're going to see how many people actually need it blood throughout the interview. Okay. So I'm going to put it down here, and we'll get back to it. First off, obviously weather, um, the cold temperatures play a role, but what are some of the other things that prevent people from donating in the winter? Uh, well, besides weather, people not being able to get keep their appointments, um, the flu season, colds, and the flu season's been particularly severe this year. We've lost a lot of donors temporarily because of illness. Mm -hmm. And now schools is also a big uh, donor. You, 11 to 12 percent of blood comes from schools. Um, yeah, and that's a, another, um, that hurts us also during this time of year between winter break, you know, for the, for the high schools and then for the colleges and universities to be out. We lose a, a large amount of donors that have, and those donors have to be made up through community members. It's really easy to donate blood. I did it in the summer. I came here. Uh, we yeah. we kind of walked everyone through the whole process and look at me. I know, you're still smiling, I'm still aren't smiling. You? And yes. It really was painless. I've done it before and I definitely yeah. am going to do it again. Now, if you're looking for somewhere to donate, you have a big blood drive coming up in Ocean City. Yes, it's um, January 21st at the Convention Center. It's our 17th year doing the Ocean City Blood Drive, and we're looking for 500 people on the 21st. Um, we've extended our hours from 8 a.m. to 6, and we've got all kinds of fun things going on as usual. We'll have lots of good snacks at the canteen, mm. the pizza, the donuts, the candy, the fruit, and also everybody that comes gets a chance to win a flat screen a flat TV, screen TV so and that's some great. other great prizes. Well, that's awesome. Check it out. And uh, you want to make a reservation if you can for that so um, they know. Yeah, we would prefer if you can make an appointment, do mm. so. You can call our toll-free number or schedule online. Um, we will take walk-ins, but we want to know we can depend on us on, on most of the people coming in mm -hmm. because we can't always depend on walk-ins. So I want to uh, check our little experiment right now. We're coming up on two minutes, so I'm going to stop it right at two minutes. That's about 60 people that mm -hmm. needed blood just in that short interview. That's a ton of people, and especially it during is. the winter, we want to encourage you, if you can safely, to get out and donate blood. Now, if you Please. want more information on the OC Blood Drive, all you have to do is visit our website, wboc.com, and 
click on our picture at the top of the page. Jimmy and Lisa, Suzanne just reminded me I haven't donated blood since August, so I'm going to sign up and then I'll head back to the studio and I'll send it back to you guys. All right. And you tell Suzanne, I'll see her on Friday because that's when my appointment is. <laughs> uh, and you know, Suzanne mentioned that because of the flu, people mm -hmm. were not able to get in and, and donate the blood. And I tell you what, the flu has been classified as widespread at a high intensity level. The Maryland Department of Health and High Mental Hygiene says influenza in Maryland seem to be holding steady until the week of December 20th when cases began to grow amazingly. Um, we'll tell you more about the breakdown, the numbers for all the area on Delmarva coming up here in just a little bit. Yeah. So something else that goes on all over the place is sometimes children go missing. Yeah. And there was a system developed uh, based on a missing little girl named Amber. It's called the Amber Alert System. And guess what? Starting today, Facebook is tapping into its 185 million U.S. users to help find and return missing children, you'll start seeing Amber Alerts on your Facebook feed. The new program will geographically pinpoint the alerts so that they'll appear in the timelines of Facebook users who are near the search area. Just this last weekend, an Amber Alert was issued for two Delaware children they were both found safe. Right, right. And what a great idea because we always have our phones with us. What a way. In fact, you know, I can't live without mine. You have yours there. Yeah, I right, always yeah. keep mine right here. And let me tell you something. A new study says that maybe we're a little dumber without our smartphones. Well, I don't know if, if you want to say we're dumber, but <laughs> we don't do as well. According to a University of Missouri study, they gathered these people together with their cell phones. They told them they were coming in for a study on a new wireless blood pressure cuff. So what they did is they had them put on this cuff and they took some crossword puzzles, did some mind studies or mind puzzles, and then they took the uh, they took the phones away from them, right. telling them that wait a minute, we can't do this because it's interfering with the blood pressure cuff. So then they did the same puzzles again without the phones and their cognitive thinking skills went down. Really? So basically what they, I guess, found out from that was people really need to have their smartphones around. I guess they kind of have an anxiety that uh, goes with it. You know, if they don't have it, they can't think straight. I know I kind of... I just hate to think that all my intelligence is in this thing. Yeah, <laughs> in your smartphone. We'll all right, we'll take it away from you and see what happens. I would really <laughs> rather you didn't. Well, something that's getting passed around is some state money. It's coming to downtown Dover and Seaford. Dover, one of three municipalities chosen by Governor Jack Markell to receive state-funded incentives for downtown revitalization. Seaford is another. You probably remember Burton Brothers Hardware mm -hmm. here, burned down a couple of years yeah. ago. Uh, now it's just an empty lot. Well, the funding for the first year of the Markell's Downtown Development District program will spur investments and community development. The third one is Wilmington. Investors are going to be entitled to reimbursement grants worth up to 20% of the cost of their projects. Hmm, very Great. interesting. Well, you know, one thing that a lot of downtowns want is food for people mm -hmm. to come downtown to eat. Well, now it looks like you can grab a bite to eat by, from a truck that might be rolling around your area. We're seeing a lot of these uh, food trucks around. Right. More and more of them have been popping up on the peninsula. These trucks Trucks offer cheap, tasty treats such as soft shell crab BLTs, strawberry cheesecake egg rolls, and fish tacos. Well, there's more to the story, and WBOC's Cleo Green takes a closer look at this trend and a WBOC.com feature story, Food on the Go. You can go to our website to see that story. There's WBOC. been one of those trucks just down the street. I know, I've seen that one. Ago. Well, speaking of food, the seventh annual Empty Bowls Community Dinner is coming up in February. The dinner benefits Talbot County Food Pantries. Tickets are on sale now for the dinner at the Emanuel Lutheran Church Hall in Easton. The event has sold out for the last four years. Now, another event that's coming up, the stage play Annie, based on the comic strip Little Orphan Annie, it's coming to Easton. Well, here's something that's pretty cool. This is professional canine actor Mikey, who will play the role of Sandy for next weekend's Easton Middle School Musical. He has starred on television as well as in the movies. Theater teacher and director Ricky Vatanovec will celebrate his 10th anniversary putting on what has become a January tradition and thought he'd do something really special by having Mikey, Mikey in that. You can buy tickets Sandy. in advance for the play in Easton High School's Talbot County Auditorium for January 23rd, 24th, 30th, and 31st at 7. Or there's a matinee performance at 2 on January 25th. Fans can bring a pet food donation for Sandy's Pantry. Now, despite what a lot of dog lovers think, a cat can be good for several things. Of course, everybody knows that a light on the floor will certainly attract a cat's attention right away. Then, of course, what you do, being a self-confident as a cat is, it'll chase that light, yeah. fully expecting to catch it. It's at that point you can play Bowling for Dollars. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
a lover. Well, we'll still okay. ahead on Delmarva Life. Our attention turns to what many on Delmarva and around the country are dealing with this winter, the flu. Just how bad is it? And we'll tell you why the CDC is calling it an epidemic. So what can you do to avoid getting sick? Even if you got the flu shot, you still need to take extra precautions and we're going to tell you what they are. And if you do get sick, find out how to know if you should go to an urgent care center, your doctor's office, or when you should head to the ER. Well, one place you may find relief is in your kitchen. We'll show you some common items you probably have in your cupboards right now that can help ease the symptoms. And from your kitchen to our Del Marble Life kitchen, Jen Layton from Layton's Chance Vineyard and Winery shows us how to create some tasty wine blends. And a little later, many have started on that New Year's resolution to get in shape. Many will also give up. Find out why that soreness you may be feeling is a good sign. Plus, why the phrase no pain, no gain should not be your exercise mantra. All that and more when Delmarva Life returns. Delmarva Life is brought to you by Sussex County Federal Credit Union, guiding you to your financial future. Peninsula Regional Medical Center, honored to serve the entire Delmarva Peninsula since 1897. Your local York and LG dealers and State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. How many times have you heard of a convicted felon using the words, I didn't do it? What well, happens every hour of every day in every state. Thing is, sometimes those words are true. And that's the case for our next guest. Ryan Ferguson was only 17 years old, a college freshman.